2024 marks the 150th anniversary of the City of Winnipeg, and throughout this year, the City of Winnipeg has been coming up with ways to celebrate 150 years since Winnipeg's incorporation. One of the fantastic initiatives that has been recently unveiled is the Winnipeg 150 Archives Tour. From now until year's end, the Archives Tour will display historical panels and images about Winnipeg in different public places around the city, including public libraries. The Winnipeg 150 Archives Tour offers the public a chance to connect with our past and gain a deeper appreciation for the vibrant community we are today. It is an opportunity for everyone to visit the exhibit and learn more about our shared history. And joining me here in the Classic 107 studio, I am joined by Sarah Ramston, who is the Senior Archivist for the City of Winnipeg. Hey, Sarah, nice to have you here. Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for having me. Mm -hmm. It... I want to start things out. It seems like such a monumental job compiling all of the materials and putting them together into an exhibit. How long has this project been in the planning? Well, we're really excited about taking this to the community, and um, we've been looking for uh, over a, well over a year now, looking for ways that the archives can commemorate Winnipeg's 150th anniversary. It's a huge milestone. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the city announced the Winnipeg 150 Legacy Project and the investment of, an, of the renovation of the 380 William, the Carnegie Library, mm. for the archives. But of course, we knew that wouldn't be. Uh, the renovations are expected to get underway. Um, but we, at the present, lack event space. We lack exhibit space. So we're we landed on the idea of doing a traveling exhibit um, mm. as a way of connecting with community and showing that archives were more about just preserving records, were about connecting with people and using records to tell stories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not just the city of Winnipeg's archives that make up the exhibit, but there's also uh, materials from the Manitoba Museum, the Manitoba Archives, the Hudson Bay Company Archives. How did the archivists pool their resources uh, to put, put the show together? Well, a lot of conversations yeah. and excitement over uh, Winnipeg 150. Uh, we have such a vibrant heritage community here in Winnipeg, and uh, the, the we knew that there wouldn't be an opportunity to tell every little detail about <laughs> Winnipeg 1, 150. Uh, I worked with my colleagues at the Winnipeg Public Library, with my fellow archivists, um, uh, my close colleague, Mary Peterson, at the Planning, Property, and Development Department. Uh, and we, what we decided to do was kind of create this thematic overview of Winnipeg history and sort of enough to pique people's interest and get images from the archives out there. Uh, but what we really hope is that people will explore Winnipeg history further. Uh, mm. The last panel talks about, um, well, it really is an invitation uh, to visit places like the Winnipeg Gallery at the Manitoba Museum, um, the archives, uh, the Hudson's Bay Company archives, um, either in person or, yeah. or on our websites, right? We have a range of historical resources there. And archives are such a wealth of pictures and, you know, books and, you know, everything you want to know about a very specific subject, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. 150 years, uh, it seems, as you were saying, like there's a ton of ground to cover. How is the exhibit laid out? Is it chronological? How, how is it displayed? Well, th the first panel, uh, there's eight panels in total, and the first talks about the Winnipeg 150 Legacy Project and the um, renovation of the Carnegie Library for the Archives Program. Uh, and it talks about the theme of Winnipeg, with, Winni sorry, Winnipeg 150, mm -hmm. like our shared stories, our shared future, uh, which we think it, the archives is a good, is a very important symbol of that theme. Um, and then we lay out sort of a thematic overview of Winnipeg history, exploring Winnipeg as an indigenous city, um, as a location and transportation hub, a commercial center, uh, the evolution of mun municipal government, mm. and we have a panel on arts and culture. And finally, um, there's an invitation to explore Winnipeg history further and a series of QR codes that will take people to other sites uh, or websites. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, there are so many iconic uh, Winnipeg locations. There's the Forks, the Ledge, Portage of Maine, the Bay Building, etc. Can you talk about some of the places that are documented uh, in the exhibit and some of the places that Winnipeggers might be uh, familiar with? Well, the Forks features prominently. We have um, a beautiful oil painting, uh, 1869, that's from the Manitoba Museum's collection. It shows like 
the fort as well as a, um, a, a dog sled. Mm. Um, and we have aerial views, contemporary views of the forks, uh, as well as celebrations at Odina Circle. Um, we really wanted to, uh, in those images of the forks, which is on the panel about Winnipeg as an Indigenous city, um, show that the Indigenous histories and contributions uh, to Winnipeg, um, they ha there is a rich past, and these contributions, of course, are, are ongoing and make Winnipeg um, a, like a vibrant city to live in. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that makes it so vibrant, I was talking about this off the air, uh, my family moved uh, to Winnipeg in 1987. We moved here from Edmonton. And one of the things okay. that struck me really strongly was there seemed to be much more of an ethnic quality to Winnipeg than Edmonton. And Edmonton has, you know, lots of immigrants as well. But uh, I'm thinking in particular of like North Maine with mm -hmm. all the kosher butchers and that were on North Maine. And then there's the Ukrainian church on, on Maine yes. as well. How does the exhibit deal with this whole immigration uh, part of the Winnipeg question? Well, we talk about Winnipeg as a, a location hub, a center uh, for, for people from across the world who chose to Winnipeg to make Winnipeg their home. Um, and you know what you're saying, it reminded me of, of one of the images we have in the exhibit. It's of the North End Market, or mm. the former North End Market, uh, which was at one time um, by Dufferin and, and Darby Street in the North End. Um, and it's, uh, there's, you know, signs in u that are written in Ukrainian, yeah. and um, there's it's just a, a really vibrant community photo. Like there's families and a bunch of wagons and produce. It's um, from 1914, and it's you know one of the many images that we have uh, in the archives and on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a very dear friend of mine from high school. Her husband is a train spotter. He's from Toronto, but uh, the first time I met him, he was super excited to come to Winnipeg because of our rich railroad history. Pretty much all the railroad lines had built buildings around the forks. Um, we were sort of the railroad hub, sort of Canada's version of Chicago. Is that mm -hmm. covered in the exhibit as well, or the fact that Winnipeg was sort of the end of the line before people hit the prairies? Absolutely. We talk, uh, one of the panels, the title is kind of Center of Canada, and it focuses on um, Winnipeg's role as kind of the commercial marketing transportation hub. So mm -hmm. you've got um, uh, the like the exchange district, for example, sort of built up around that manufacturing role and mm -hmm. uh, talks about Winnipeg sort of being the uh, agricultural uh, center of, of Canada and the gateway to the West. Yeah. That's such an important part of Winnipeg history. Yeah, and so much of that is uh, set up uh, at, at the Forks, right? Which is sort of, there would be no Winnipeg without the fact that the R Red River and the Assiniboine uh, meet. Um, there's this incredible yes. history of the Forks. Uh, there is it being a rest stop for uh, the Cree, Anishinaabe, Nakoda, and Sioux. Uh, there's also <laughs> the question of colonization, especially uh, the role of the Hudson Bay Company and the Northwest Company uh, in the mid 18th century. How is that covered in, in the exhibit? It, you know, it really is important uh, that the city acknowledge our the legacies of colonialism and and take steps to address that. Um, I think we do that by acknowledging um, our our history for sure, mm -hmm. and that means acknowledging like uh, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit contributions to history, uh, and acknowledging the discontinuities um, and some of the um, yes. violent events of the past. Yeah. Um, you know, in the exhibit, we have this image of the Bill and Helen Nori Library and some of the um, Rooster Town panels that were installed there. Mm. Um, and that, of course, is such an important story about um, a Metis community that was displaced uh, to make way for development. Um, so history, yes, there are uh, difficult stories to be told, but they need to be told. And there's stories, there's stories we can certainly learn from, right? Exactly. Mm. Uh, Winnipeg is unusual because it sort of expanded and sort of took in all these other m municipalities. Uh, yeah. How does the exhibit deal with that? I mean, there was Elmwood, there's St. Bonaventure, yeah. St. James. How, how, did, how, does that, how does that work in the exhibit? 
We do talk about unicity in a panel called um, from, like, from many to one, and that is, of course, a reference to Winnipeg's current motto, one with the strength of many, uh, mm. which was adopted shortly after amalgamation. And, and so we have, yeah, the 13 municipalities uh, that amalgamated effective uh, to create the city of Winnipeg, uh, effective um, in 1972. And we list all of those um, municipalities, and we have this really kind of vibrant image of um, the welcome, bienvenue yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to St. Boniface sign that would have greeted you on Provence um, back before Unicity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one of the really great things about the exhibit is uh, it is on tour. Can you talk about some of the kinds of places that the tour is going to be visiting? Yes, so there are actually two uh, versions of the exhibit and one is touring uh, malls. Uh, it's now up at the Garden City Shopping Center um, until July 2nd. And after that, it's going to be at the Kildonan Place Shopping Center, the airport, uh, and Grant Park Shopping Center. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's another version of the exhibit that's going to tour libraries, which is Mm -hmm. really exciting. Um, And so uh, that is up now at the Charleswood Library and will be up until June 28th. And actually, so listeners for the full <laughs> schedule of, of those tours, uh, you can check out the event page on the Winnipeg 150 website. Mm-hmm. And for our Classic 107 listeners, I've embedded a direct link to that uh, website <laughs> awesome. on, in the article that you can find up at classic107.com. Uh, I'm going to round things out uh, by asking, what are some of the through lines or themes or thoughts that you hope people walk away with after seeing the uh, ar- archival exhibit? For me, it's it's definitely about, um, I think, connecting. Like you were saying about the Forks being a a meeting place. And this is such a rich history to draw from. Mm -hmm. Because Winnipeg has been a a meeting place for over 6,000 years. And so there's the opportunity for for connection. So I really want people to kind of walk away with um, um, thinking um, about the other stories that can be shared and the stories that they can share and where... Uh, they might kind of go to to find those stories uh, and connect with people. Mm, Perfect. Sarah, this has been so great to have you here today talking about the Winnipeg 150 Archives Tour. Knowing about our history is so important and what a terrific way to celebrate Winnipeg being 150. Thanks for taking the time to stop by and talk to me today. This has been really wonderful. Thanks so much for having me.